This week you should all start thinking about your projects and choosing your topics. I thought it would be a good idea to have a short video about project composition and plagiarism. I'll just go over briefly the project format and structure and talk a little bit about SafeAssign and plagiarism. I think this will be good information to have not just for this class but for any writing you have to do in the future as well. First let's talk about the project format. All projects for this course should be in the form of an essay using the MLA style. Take a look at the sample student project for an example of the style to follow. And you can also check out the Purdue Online Writing Lab for examples of MLA style citations. The link is here and also in the project guidelines. Some projects will require charts, graphs, spreadsheets, or other additional materials to be included. You can include these in the body of the essay or attach them as additional files. Be sure to label any mater materials appropriately so that they can be easily identified. You should also use appropriate and easily identifiable file names for your project files. A good thing to do is start your file name with your last name. So for example, for project one, if I was saving a project, I could call it gaileyproject1.pdf and that easily tells me which student that project belongs to and which project it is. Now let's talk about structure. As I said, all the projects will be in essay form and an essay performs several different functions, so it should be organized around those functions. The first paragraph will be an introduction where you introduce your topic or the argument of the essay and also outline the main points of the body of the essay. Then you'll have the body of your essay. First you'll want to introduce any background material or data that the reader needs to know about. And then after you've done that you can analyze the data, make comparisons or point out trends, and try to explain what causes what you observe in the data. And this is also where you would probably include any graphs, histograms, or other visual aids. And be sure to not just include those but also describe in writing. Uh, what you're seeing there. And also this is a place where you could point out strengths or weaknesses in the data or how it was gathered. Your last paragraph will be your conclusion and here you'll want to summarize the main points of the essay and also state any main ideas that the reader should take away. Now let's talk a little bit about SafeAssign. All your projects will be submitted to SafeAssign through Blackboard. If you're having trouble, you can email your files to me, and I can also submit your files to SafeAssign myself. SafeAssign checks several types of sources for matches that could indicate plagiarism, and these sources include documents available on the internet, uh, and also in a large database that includes articles from over a thousand publications, and other files submitted to SafeAssign by students from WCU and other institutions. It is expected that you will have some matches if you're using direct quotes from sources as well as matches from citing the same sources as other essays. Now I want to talk a little bit about plagiarism and how to avoid it. Plagiarism can be either intentional or unintentional. Intentional plagiarism happens when students just copy and paste the work of others to avoid, avoid doing the required work. Unintentional plagiarism can happen when you don't use good note-taking or writing practices. So the following are a few examples of unintentional plagiarism. First, patchworking. This is just piecing together chunks of text from different sources. So you may have taken notes from a lot of different sources and you end up sort of just copying and pasting different chunks to make up your essay. Uh, another type of unintentional plagiarism is close paraphrasing, and this is where maybe you're taking notes and you change only a few words from the source text, but you don't identify it as a quote, but it's maybe too close to being a quote. So here are some good note-taking practices to help you avoid these things. When you copy something exactly as it appears in the source, be sure to put obvious quote marks around what you've copied so you know that it is a quote. 
You should also write down the source as you would in your Works Cited page and as an in-text citation so that you have that ready when you put your paper together. If you are paraphrasing and not copying directly what you see in the source, you should be sure not to repeat too many of the words from the original text. Your notes should preserve the meaning of the text, but be clearly different. So let's talk a little bit more about paraphrasing and quoting text. In general, paraphrasing is preferable to quoting. Paraphrasing shows that you've read and processed the relevant information. You can use quotes to emphasize your po point, but don't do it just to avoid paraphrasing. So again, how to paraphrase. You should read the text carefully and look up any unfamiliar words or concepts. Then close the original text and think about what you've just read and write down what you understand the author to be saying. Then go back and take another look at the original text. Check that your paraphrasing is significantly different from the original phrasing, but preserves the meaning of the text. And again, you should create the citation for your works cited page and in-text citation. When you're doing a quote, you should introduce your quote with the source or author's name. Be sure to enclose all the quoted material in quotation marks and also create the citation for your works cited page and in-text citation. So here's an example of that. You can say, According to Kim Blake, the best place to eat lobster is in is the coast of Maine. And then your in-text citation would be Blake 16. So I hope you find that helpful and good luck on your projects.